So first of all, welcome all the viewers to Propathon and hope you guys are having uh, lots of learnings from our talks and events here. And uh, big thanks to you, Shekhar. Really appreciate your energy and enthusiasm to keep learning about new things and the property market in particular, which is what we are here to discuss today. Mm -hmm. So appreciate your presence uh, okay. over here to uh, take you. us through this talk. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Can you give me very briefly or very, I mean, as much as possible details? Uh, you can decide how detail you want to go into uh, about the property market per se. Yeah. So the thing about property is like it's an ocean, mm -hmm. right? You can you can be a big fish or you can be a shark or you can just be a small little mm -hmm. you know fish having your own time in okay. the sea, right? So uh, the property market as such is is a major contributor to the country's GDP. Mm -hmm. Uh, in fact, I'm given to understand it's more than 20-25% of the country's GDP itself, wow. right? So in terms of number of jobs created, in terms of the financial impact and everybody's lives, right? Property touches everybody's lives, mm -hmm. whether it's going to a property to work in or to live in or to amusement, entertainment. So property touches everybody's, mm -hmm. everybody's life in some way or the other. Uh, it's such a large industry that, like I said, there are just uh, immense opportunities within the industry. Mm -hmm. And in a growth economy like uh, India especially, uh, it's just unlimited, right? The property market has been growing exponentially uh, from the time I entered the industry, which is uh, almost a couple of decades back. So our family history in real estate goes back a long, long way. Oh. Mom actually started 86, 87. Wow. And so we've seen the evolution of the industry from, from a long time. And we've seen the growth. We've all enjoyed the growth in the industry. We've experienced the property values are rising, uh, expectations of the consumers are also rising, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so overall, I think it's a very exciting space uh, to be in. And uh, like I said, everybody, everybody in the country is involved in some or the other way in the real estate and property mm -hmm. market. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it, uh, isn't it more related to the urban uh, areas than the rural areas? So I'll give you an example, uh, Shekhar, real life example. So this place that we are sitting in right now, in Kurumangla and 3rd block. So today's papers, it's all over the place, right? Uh, Kurumangla, 3rd block, yeah. capital values are going through the roof. Uh, but a bit of trivia, right? So then this property was purchased originally from the BDA. Mm -hmm. This was the only property here after St. John's, wow. right? There was nothing else. Really? There was nothing but this property after St. John's. And oh. this whole thing we see around us, Korumangla, mm -hmm. it was one huge, like a swamp, wow. <laughs> right? In fact, it was called Solle Mangla. Solle in Kannada means mosquito, mm, mosquito yeah. right? Because there was all pathanium and there were grass and all overgrown. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was absolutely nothing, right? And um, I remember those days very briefly because I was obviously still a kid. Uh, but if you look at the sort of growth that's happened over the past couple of decades, it's absolutely phenomenal, right? Mm -hmm. Um, that's one example. So what was considered out of the city mm -hmm. is now heart of the city, cool. right? It's the same thing with any part of Bangalore. If you go towards the north, Devanhalli, we've all heard these stories about the farmers who were, you know, mm -hmm. uh, dry, literally, you know, going in the cycles. And then in one year's time, they all bought Mercs because the land value just shot up like crazy. Mm -hmm. And that same story still continues, right? The city is still expanding. It's now gone beyond the airport. It's going towards Hyderabad on the north. Mm -hmm. Uh, towards the east, we have the Hoskote belt, you know, Whitefield. Uh, towards the south, Sajapur, which has gone towards Hosur now. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's touched Tamil Nadu also. Really? Oh. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Towards the west, you know, you have uh, the whole uh, Pinya, Nelmangla, that side. It's just, mm -hmm. like I said, growing and growing, going towards Hassan almost, right? Mm -hmm. So, in terms of the market size in Bangalore, it's bigger than Bombay, actually. Mm -hmm. If you look at the official BBMP survey, mm -hmm. in terms of the square kilometers, mm -hmm. Bangalore is actually bigger than Bombay. Really? Oh. Yeah, many of us don't know that, right? Oh. But it's just the sheer mind-boggling pace and scale of the growth of the city, which has actually enabled all of this. So there's no clear demarcation saying rural and urban real estate, mm -hmm. right? What is rural will be tomorrow's urban, okay. right? Okay. And one more bit of trivia, the same property like I mentioned, 10,000 square feet, we bought it for 10,000 rupees. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And this is like I said, in the BDA auction, 1975. Yeah. Uh, different story that we didn't retain it. My mom sold it to the present owner for the same price, right? <laughs> because all the, uh, the people were like, why are you buying this property in 
middle of nowhere, you know, Kormangla, all the mosquitoes are there, it's not safe, don't go there. So then she gave this property to these guys and we went and bought a small plot little down the road. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And now the property values over here, this property is worth around 50 crores. Wow. Right? So um, look at the like yeah, appreciation at, in value. Absolutely. 10,000 to 50 crores is, I mean, whatever um, we can do the phenomenal. XIRR, XL calculation, IRR, whatever you want to call it. But then the valuations have just gone berserk. Right? So... Tell me very broadly, the one is a residential property where we would yeah. like to read this dwell, yeah. right? Yeah. Other one is an investment. Yeah. Which you do you think do you think is really increasing? The investment part of it or the like like staying or living? Yeah. Need? Well see so what has driven the Bangalore market is predominantly the migrant population, right? Uh, so essentially all started with the IT boom. Everything in Bangalore started with IT. Mm -hmm. Before IT there was nothing. Yeah. It was called the pensioners paradise, like I said, early nineties when we started. Uh, the business, there was uh, there was nothing. Bangalore was known as a pensioner's paradise, mm -hmm. garden city, all, all these things, right? Uh, so once the IT guys started coming in, you know, the, the big tech companies with whom yeah, you also work, IT, Wipro, yeah. you remember Wipro and back in the day. Uh, so that led the demand for housing, right? That boosted the demand for, for housing. the housing. Uh, to start with rental. Okay. Uh, and the magic about Bangalore is nobody wants to leave once they come, right? They come to Bangalore and then they just enjoy the weather, the people are very nice, hospitable. So nobody wants to leave Bangalore, everybody wants to keep coming into Bangalore, which is what's again fueled the boom, right? Mm -hmm. Because when people come in, talent is available. True. IT guys need, you know, uh, talented uh, folks from the IITs or True. IAMs, what have you. Um, so that's what's led the, led the boom. So uh, people come initially, they stay in rental housing, like they stay with us, property angel, our tenants are mainly 90% of our tenants are IT guys, right? So once they come in, then they realize that, hey, you know, I'm anyway paying a rent. I might as well buy a place on EMI and then own the property. Um, and that also leads to wealth creation because, like I said, the market over here has been growing at a very healthy pace, right? Uh, anywhere from 8 to 10% per annum, oh. which, which is a really, really fast pace of growth. Uh, it does obviously have its cycles up and down, mm -hmm. but broadly the trend ha has been only one way and that's only up. Oh. And uh, in my opinion, I, I see that continuing for the next 25 years okay. at the minimum, right? I mm. also heard a lot of uh, the apartments, like a lot of building, mm. apps, right? A lot of apartments also really like vacant. Yeah. That means, are they really kind of people who are invested from other cities and things like that? Or? Yeah, that again depends. Uh, see, it's all about the location, right? Uh, in fact, uh, during Corona, that, that was the case. There was a lot of inventory which was lying vacant because people obviously went back to their hometowns. Mm -hmm. Uh, and like I said, Bangalore is all about IT, migrant population. So if they go back to their hometowns, then Bangalore is pretty much yeah. left with not much, right? But then what has happened is after Corona, it's a reverse wave. Oh. People are all coming back, you know. Companies are now calling people back to their campuses. Mm -hmm. So that's led to a huge explosion in demand. Really? And there's not much of supply left within city limits at all. Really? For renting. Even buying, in fact, developers have reported record sales. Hmm. Uh, this is not just Bangalore, but across the country. Oh. If you look at Bombay, if you look at Delhi, you look at Hyderabad, Chennai, the major metro mm -hmm. markets, yeah. uh, the sales are at all time highs, right? And this is even if you look at all listed companies like uh, Prestige, if you look at Purva, you look at Shoba, DLF, Loda, these are the major developers in the country, right? All of them, without exception, have record sales. It's okay. all public information is available, stock market listed companies, right? So the sales, like I said, I've seen a healthy pickup because again, to COVID two years, people are sitting at home True. saving money, True. right? So what do you do? You go invest into property, right? Uh, so the markets come back in, in, in a very big way. And I, like I said, I, I see the same thing continuing for the next 25, 30 years easily because of the macroeconomic factors, you know, India is in a very well uh, placed situation right now. Uh, lot of jobs coming in. You, we've seen Apple, I think, uh, three days back, they bought a land in Devanhali worth 300 crores. Wow. Right? Uh, that was Foxconn. Foxconn, uh, Foxconn yeah, is one the of the biggest suppliers to yes. Apple, right? Yeah. So they bought a, uh, a land worth 300 crores and they're going to give employment to one lakh people. Wow. Right? Obviously, the government's working closely with them. Um, so it all looks very positive. Uh, broadly, like I said, it's extremely bullish mm. for the next 20, 30 years. Real estate is absolutely the place to be. Uh, right time, right place, like they say, you know, yeah. Thanks for that insight, yeah. excellent. Yeah. And uh, suppose if I was to invest the residential property and commercial property, yeah. the equal value, which one do you think uh, I should go for? Yeah. 
So typically what happens is residential property people buy for capital appreciation, right? Mm -hmm. The property value keeps, like I said, steady goes up 7%, 8% or so per year. So commercial, what happens is the rental you get is very good. Oh. So you would typically get, I mean, anywhere from 8, 9, 10% also in the ready commercial building. Uh, if you're a little adventurous, you know, you can deal with all the construction <laughs> and the financing and mm -hmm. all of those challenges. You could very well achieve 12 to 15 percent if you do a commercial building standalone. If you develop a commercial building, okay, the so the rental yield is much higher in a commercial. Okay. Uh, in residential, people primarily buy to stay uh, yeah. or even to rent out. Rent like total. a lot of our customers, for example, NRIs, right? Uh, they have bought a property as as a very wise investment. I would say it's the safest of all investments, mm -hmm. um, and those would appreciate with time, right? And obviously, there is a rental income also. Uh, but commercial tends to give you a better return uh, uh, oh. on a rental yield basis. On the flip side, commercial will not appreciate as quickly as residential. The values will remain more oh. or less stagnant oh. because you are buying it at a much higher price. Like right? okay. commercial is always priced at a much higher price point yeah. than residential. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. So, so therefore, the the appreciation year on year is not as much as residential. Okay. Yeah. What are the risk factors in terms of commercial? Commercial, I think the number one risk uh, that you will have is, is, is vacancy because sometimes like what happened in Corona, mm. I can say a personal example, I mean, we have commercial property as well. So tenants said, you know, we can't pay you rent. I mean, we don't have any business. How do we pay the rent? Right. So a lot of them vacated and then getting them back has been a challenge. That is that is one big risk. And then if you go on to like a tech park again there, let's say you have one big tenant, right? Mm -hmm. And that tenant has whatever issue, right? and then they decide to vacate, uh, then your inventory lies vacant and then getting large square feet like you know, uh, some of these tech parts run into millions of square feet. So then identifying uh, tenants to replace those tenants becomes, becomes a I have a couple of friends who own these tech parks and some of their tenants have vacated. It is one tenant who had taken half a million square feet. Um, and that guy because of whatever has been happening over the past couple of years with respect to interest rates going up and business challenges. so. They just vacated uh, and now this guy, like I said, he's sitting with uh, half a million, a huge 5 lakh square feet, oh. right? Um, so that, that, that is one, one risk. Well, the returns are definitely better, but the risk is, vacancy is one risk. And the second one, I mean, I wouldn't call it a risk as such, the opportunity cost, right? Because like I said, the capital values tend to go up, not that they go down, but they go up at a slightly lower Low pace, uh, slower Lindy pace residential. than residential. Yeah. So okay. that's, that could be another potential pitfall, if I want to call it that, for uh, commercial. Um, are, but, there, sorry, yeah. are, there, are there any kind of a earmark place for commercial and earmark place for residential per se or? Yeah, say, well, that's the case in develop, um, developed markets. So when I say developed markets, I mean the US, mm -hmm. uh, Europe, a lot of the uh, uh, ASEAN countries, mm -hmm. Singapore, Hong Kong, etc. Very well organized. Uh, but what tends to happen out here is that it tends to be mixed development, right? So while you do have hubs, for example, in Bangalore, you would say CBD, mm. right? MG Road, ca ca Commercial yeah. Street, Church Street, these are the more established commercial hubs. And residential locations like, again, it was residential earlier, Kurmangla, Indranagar. Uh, but even these locations are now getting roads where the commercial is like very prominent. Yeah, I have right? seen also. Um, yeah, so like I said, it's, it's, it tends to be a little amorphous. It tends to be mixed, right? Hmm. So the, the very nature of real estate uh, over here is that it's not, you can't delineate uh, perfectly well that this is commercial and this is residential. Uh, but having said that, yeah, these days we're getting uh, some guys who are fairly active in RWAs, welfare associations, mm -hmm. and they're demanding that uh, you should not have commercial uh, activity. Obviously, I mean, if you're having like a pub, for example, playing music late at night, it will disturb the guys staying in, in the surrounding mm, area. Yeah. So, that's that's something that uh, that should be looked into. We also believe that it's better to organize the city into you know strict zoning, wherein you have commercial activity here, residential activity here. So that's always better for any developing uh, uh, place. That's what we believe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. In terms of investment, which city you think is the best one? I would say Bangalore is the best city. No really? doubt about it. Yeah. We're not Pune. given the growth, given the growth, given the opportunity, given the weather, given the talent, uh, people. I don't think there's any second uh, uh, thought that... No, uh, no Pune. No Pune is also... Is, I mean, we were, we were in Pune just a, a couple of months back. As Sapna mentioned, my co-founder, that we're looking at expanding our operations to different cities. So, obviously, Pune is, is a very uh, uh, attractive spot because there also you have talent, you have land availability at 
reasonable valuations, reasonable compared to Bombay because mm -hmm. Bombay is obviously one of the most expensive markets in the country today. Uh, and Bangalore has also, like I said, become one of the most uh, expensive and prime locations. Uh, there was a report in the paper yesterday, where I don't know if you saw it. So MG Road is the most uh, prime uh, retail spot in the entire country. Oh, really? Right, yeah, yeah. So that this was a report by Cushman and Wakefield, one of the mm -hmm. yeah, leading yeah, international yeah. consultants. So they mentioned that uh, MG Road is by far the, the most prime retail street in the country today, right? Wow. Um, so, no, I mean, don't get me wrong, like I said, obviously, other cities are, are also growing, right? Um, but like I said, looking at a long range view, looking at the growth, which we extrapolate will continue for the next 20, 30 years. I, I would say there's no other uh, competitor as such, right? To Bangalore. Bangalore has a maximum tech startups in, in this in True. the country by True. far. True. Uh, right. Although Gurgaon is, is also is also you know catching up, uh, but by far Bangalore has the highest number of tech startups, highest number of VC funding. All the big VC boys are here in, in yeah. Bangalore. Okay. Right. And tech is the way forward. Now we have the AI revolution AI, coming yeah. up. So like I said, it's all uh, it all comes together, right? In a way. Um, so Bangalore is doing very well. Obviously, the the older established cities are already you know they've already grown. Like Bombay is no place to grow. True. Bombay is so huge and vast, and it's it's, it's a I mean, fantastic market to be in. Uh, but Pune, yeah, Pune, like I said, it's also growing pretty fast. I would say they're almost uh, neck and neck with Bangalore. Bang Bangalore is leading the race, like I said, in all parameters, right? With with respect to absorption of office space, with respect to number of startups, with respect to amount of funding raised, Bangalore is leading the race in all these parameters, um, which is why I say that. Uh, Gurgaon is obviously another great market. Gurgaon Noida is, is growing very rapidly as well. Mm, and you have other cities like Kochi coming up, mm -hmm. which is again encouraging the IT talent. Mm -hmm. uh, you have Pune, like you mentioned. Hyderabad is, is uh, again a, very, a fantastic uh, opportunity because mm -hmm. at the pace at which it's growing. Again, the same uh, Bangalore story is sort of repeating there in terms of the Bangalore companies going and setting up base in Hyderabad. Because mm -hmm. talent is where, yeah. you know. Uh, <coughs> You eventually have Chennai, people Chennai going. also? Except yeah. Chennai is again a very well established uh, old, old city industry. with the, uh, very deep roots in manufacturing. Well, Auto industry yeah. is doing very well there. It's a port city. Uh, like I said, these are all old uh, cities which have you know, already evolved to, to a very large degree. Mm -hmm. um, so the extent of growth going forward is more on the outskirts. Even Chennai, for example, you have ECR, you have OMR Road. Uh, and OMR Road, I remember, was like for the longest time it was just like lying. Yeah, just lying. There were a lot of buildings developed there. If you, I don't know if you remember, uh, since you were in Chennai yeah, as well. Chennai, yeah. So OMR Road was like absolutely ten years and nothing happening. Now, of course, things have revived and some good developers are doing some really good projects in, in Chennai as well. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. So that that's a very brief overview of. Uh, yeah, I have uh, a couple of small uh, questions, if you don't mind. Uh, absolutely. I just have to see the list so that I sure, sure. not forgotten. Yeah. Uh, can uh, again you already covered it so yeah. can i convert my residential property into commercial property yeah you can but there there are uh, caveats involved obviously the zoning should be commercial okay so we do have uh, uh, these master plans as they are mm -hmm. called so in bangalore it's uh, developed by the bda so the bda uh, defines which road is commercial and which is a residential right so if your property falls under the commercial zone mm -hmm then you can apply to the BBMP to develop a fresh commercial okay. building. So again, we did that because we had a house uh, mm -hmm. on the main road mm. and then it came to a point where we said, look, you know, we can't live here anymore. It's too noisy and doesn't make sense. So then, so then we approached the BBMP for a fresh plan section and then we demolished it and built a commercial well, building. So well, you can do it. Possible. Just make sure that, like I said, you uh, talk to a good lawyer, get your zoning check, talk to a good architect, make sure that you're following all the norms. Uh, these days, OC is becoming very, very important for commercial. Uh, all buildings have to uh, apply for an OC and make sure you get an OC and you can do How it. How about uh, the other way around? Commercial the converter into residential? Um, that, uh, that doesn't happen too often. It does happen in, in, in certain cases. Um, but those typically are very large residential projects in very prime locations. Um, again, if you're looking at Bangalore specific, I can give you an example where UB City and the Kingfisher Towers mm. came up, right? Yeah, yeah. Vital Malaya Road, right? True, true. Uh, there, guys pay 40, 50 crores for an apartment. So, uh, at those sort of price points, it makes sense to do the reverse, like you said. Oh. But if it's if it's something of a lower capital value, then doesn't really Keep make sense for the developer also, right? Because 
even developers obviously look at the return on on investment true. they look at the capital appreciation and it has to make business sense for a developer true, to do true, that true. so the preferred way is to demolish a house and do a commercial building if it's a commercial true, viable true. location who oh. depends upon your location you oh, can great. do it yeah thank yeah. you yeah. for that yeah. uh have a couple of more and then yeah uh should i go for an independent house or an apartment what could be the advantage and disadvantage um so there again shekhar there's no one size fits all approach it all depends uh see what happens in these cities like you said gurgaon uh chennai to a certain extent more bangalore pune you have a lot of bachelors right so these guys come to work in the city and for them ideally they want a gated community where they have their friends and colleagues who are also staying and you have access to all the amenities so after a hard day's work you come back you have a swimming pool club house gym you can go work out and then chill out in your apartment and it's nice right um same with the when you transition from a let's say a bachelor to to a young couple right then gated community again is a preference because you have the amenities kids etc um and that's becoming more a trend uh, people want to stay in gated community because of the amenities mm. and also less hassles right safety also so personally i can also give in we were staying in independent houses for the longest time right um but then you have hassles to that right you have yeah safety is definitely one concern you have maintenance headaches right if you have some plumbing problem electrical problem then you got to call these guys and now you have like a uh, few companies which are doing it trying to solve that problem but it still is a major problem yeah, yeah. right uh whereas in the gated community you would have these guys on call they come and they sort of you know they help you out with that so we as a business also most of our units tend to be in these gated communities where in the maintenance issues are taken care of safety and security is there um so that's that's one end of the scale then on the other end of the scale like i said you have these uber luxury condominiums right uh where in people are shelling out 20 30 40 crores for for a house and they want to be in exclusive conclaves Uh, or even like i said here in third block we've seen the newspaper headlines uh, people are slapping up bungalows for 60 70 crores so so it all depends upon your you know your individual requirements um you can have anything from a one bedroom place to to a bungalow it depends purely on your individual requirement your budget you know and what what you want to do you know in that space oh, yeah okay yeah, Great. Yeah. thanks yeah. so if i was to buy uh, the an apartment mm. what should it they take care in terms of before really kind of selecting a builder what are the things i need to fundamental things i need to yeah, take care yeah so uh, fundamentally uh, a few basic things you need to ensure one is that uh, the guy has a rera registration the builder you can obviously go online check his reviews so we we do encourage all buyers to check the past performance of the builders check their rera um and before buying any property it's important to get a legal verification right you have to go to a good lawyer and say that look i'm trying to buy this property and give him the documents let the lawyer look at it and he'll call out any issues that you know that might be there uh you should obviously do a a visit if possible mm -hmm. either virtually or or in person just to make sure see the quality of construction is important um like i said check the online reviews you know talk to your friends just ensure that the guy is delivering what he's promising right uh another endemic problem in the industry tends to be this delays right so yeah. these days even some of the larger builders unfortunately are uh, having yeah. these delays so one should be prepared for that and plan for that because that would tend to impact your budget so whether you're paying an EMI or you're paying a rent in your existing place always be prepared for plus minus 2 years that's a, like a thumb rule right because uh, unfortunately the project uh, completion skills uh, project management skills are not up to the let's say <laughs> global standards mm -hmm. as yet mm -hmm. although we are pretty close there but then uh, delays tend to happen in projects in india so whether it's residential or commercial or uh, industrial uh, these delays tend to happen so be aware that uh, there might be a delay in your project so just you know keep in touch with your builder and make sure that things are going as per schedule so these are some of the basic uh, uh, precautions and yeah i mean you can do a survey uh mm -hmm. proper thon like what we're doing mm -hmm. right now really helps because you have all the builders all the projects under one roof so do a survey do a comparison of which project offers you what you know um and then yeah make a careful study uh, and like i said keep a few basic checklists in mind and you can yeah go ahead and yeah. uh, purchase proper thon <coughs> 23 yeah. are they also like some people are going to talk about this legality and then financing yeah. and all yeah. they're going yeah. to be we have a couple of sessions where when oh. we have uh, legal experts to give you some guidance on like you said a few basic things mm -hmm. they'll go into a few more details in terms yeah. of what documents you need to look at 
um, and there are obviously bank procedures also, right? So they'll speak about that as well. Okay, great. Uh, so yeah, we we're going to have a couple of sessions by the uh, legal experts to talk about these items in oh. further detail. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, would you like to uh, say some more which have not covered? Uh, I think fairly we have covered. Uh, thank you. It was a fairly exhaustive session. You know, I hope I didn't bore you. No, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, I see the future is extremely bright, guys. And if you're sitting on the fence, if you're thinking whether you should buy a property or not, I mean, now is the best time there's ever been, right? Uh, India is on the cusp of a major economic growth. Uh, we see very, very bright future for the real estate industry in the years to come. So it's, it's absolutely the best. Uh, time to invest into a property. So like I said, if you're sitting on the fence, if you're thinking about buying a property, then there's no better time than now to buy a property. And obviously you have a lot of companies like ours, you know, who are striving to give professional service and help the home buyers with uh, whatever they need to manage the property. Uh, so I think, yeah, in conclusion, I would say that it's, it's a great time and don't miss the boat. That's the other thing, right? Because oh, yeah. like I said, I mean, you, you, you can't even imagine the kind of growth that's that's happening uh, in the country and it sort of mind boggling. So make sure you get onto the bandwagon and just buy some property and it, I'm sure it will give you uh, excellent returns. It's a very safe investment. That's the other thing I'd like to say. Um, safety is, is definitely one of the very major uh, criteria as an investor or end user, anybody True. that you have in mind. True. So real estate, in my experience, at least ever since I got into the industry, it's always gone only one way. And, that's up, that's up. Okay. yeah take a long term approach it requires at least minimum 10 years right but have have the patience and have the this thing to hold on to it it will definitely give you good returns in the in the years to come that, okay. that that's my take on it yeah great rahul one more question i have mm -hmm. what are the kind of different uh, commercials we have or commercial properties commercial yeah. properties so basically you have uh, three major segments in the in the commercial real estate market one is the retail right so when i say retail i mean shops, storefronts, like we all see Commercial Street, Brigade Road mm -hmm. in Bangalore and Bombay, it's like you say Linking Road, Car, you know, these are the prime commercial, uh, this thing. In Delhi, you have Khan Market, you know, the most prime uh, shop front properties are called uh, retail properties, shop properties, right? Uh, then you have the office properties. Mm -hmm. So majority you must have seen where you said IT, you were working earlier, tech parks, mm -hmm. most of the big IT in Bangalore, Pune, Gurgaon, Hyderabad, all these guys work out of the larger tech parks. So that's called as the office market, office space okay. market, okay. wherein companies take up space for their employees and their operations mm -hmm. to run. Uh, then you also have the warehousing uh, mm -hmm. segment of late, especially since e-commerce has been booming over the past, you know, let's say 10 years or more uh, in the country. So all these e-com companies need places to warehouse their goods. Mm -hmm. So typically they would take up these large warehousing uh, spaces on the outskirts of cities where then you can uh, store the goods until such time they are shipped to the uh, end consumers. So broadly, those are the three major segments. You also have data centers, which is now the new uh, upcoming trend in the industry. Uh, that again, you have the tech companies, right, which need these data centers as backups. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say Amazon India or Microsoft, they have a lot of server space. So they have dedicated buildings for data centers, mm -hmm. right? So these are the, that's the fourth uh, broadly segment. Um, in retail, you also have malls. That's one thing which I missed out. Obviously, everybody likes to go to the yeah. malls on the weekends, you know, uh, you catch a movie, get a bite and do some shopping as well. So malls is one, one large In malls, uh, you, uh, sorry to interrupt, in yeah. malls, the, 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 you have to own kind of a space or it, you need to rent a pay, space? Um, if you talk about the occupiers, they rent out the place. Developers develop the place and rent them out to the occupiers. Okay, right, right, okay. That's the same case whether it's uh, commercial malls or office space office or space. even warehousing. It's the same thing. Developers typically specialize in that office space segment or the retail segment or like I said, data warehousing segment and then they lease it out to the. Uh, apart from that, uh, you obviously have general use buildings mm -hmm. like public utility building is a good example. Uh, you would say hospital, right? Mm -hmm. Hospital is also like sort of commercial. You don't stay there. Yeah. but it's meant for a utility purpose. True. So that's the other uh, uh, sub-segment in the uh, commercial market space. Uh, but what's happening in the commercial office spaces, a lot of REITs are coming up. Mm -hmm. So th those are listed entities wherein even the lay investor can purchase a, mm -hmm. a part of the building. Oh, right? part of the building. Yeah, you can buy like one share, two share, three shares. It's listed on the stock market 
and you get to uh, participate in the rental distribution. Mm -hmm. So typically a REIT is supposed to distribute 90% of the rental that it receives. Okay. Right. So the, the developer develops the REIT, right? And the REIT will have X number of commercial buildings within the REIT. Okay. And then they take that whole thing and this it on the stock market. Oh. And then investors can buy it and get the... So typically REITs will give you anywhere from 8 to 9% uh, on the rental yield basis. Uh, so it's an effective and efficient way to own a piece of commercial real estate without actually going and developing the whole oh. thing and getting into the nitty gritties of managing the asset, etc. Oh. So that's a very attractive uh, option. I encourage all the viewers to, to, to examine that. Like, you know, it's all DMAT and uh, it's a growing segment. And globally, REIT is a very, very uh, accepted uh, asset class because you have REITs in the US, you have uh, hospital REITs, you have retail REITs, you have commercial space REITs. You have data center REITs, so whatever I just mentioned, you'd, you'd have a REIT for each of those separate assets. Can and you explain it's very, very REIT, you mentioned down. one word called REIT, right? REIT. What, is it, what does it mean? Real Estate Investment Trust, oh, right? That's a, full form, okay. that's a full form of, of a REIT. Okay. And like I said, it's, it's a way for the retail investor to participate in the commercial real estate market oh, oh, okay. without actually going, getting into the hassles of acquiring land and then developing it and renting it out. So it's a, it's a convenient way that you can just buy it off the stock market oh, okay. that's called REIT yeah okay. yeah great yeah. thanks so much it was those are the various uh, very broadly obviously you can google and check the different details about all these but in a broad sense these are the various commercial uh, yeah. asset classification that you have in the commercial space as oh, such. it's yeah. useful knowledge very new yeah. knowledge thanks yeah. so much yeah. yeah thanks so much it's really okay very thank session. you so much i really yeah. learned a lot of stuff thanks wonderful so much. thanks a lot thank Shaker. you viewers thank you. all the best